Joining us now is Harbor Trucking Association CEO Matt Schrapp. Matt, great to have you on the show here. I mean, we've been hearing about a shortage in truck drivers. You're saying that's not the issue here, that it's more of a, an equipment shortage? That's right. Uh, you know, where we see those shortages and the retention issues is really over the road. Here, here locally, we have over 14,000 drivers that are doing business down here daily. The challenge becomes availability of equipment because it's caught up in, uh, you know, storing empty containers. So we're, we're storing empty containers on top of chassis that can't be used to pull the imports off of the dock. So we've been hearing about some of the moves by the Biden administration to help try and ease some of these bottlenecks, whether it's port activities shifting to more of a 24-7 operation or even fines on some of those lingering cargo containers. Is that helping at all? Well, I, I'll have to say that John Bakari, the port envoy of the White House, has been doing a fantastic job in getting all the stakeholders around the same table here. So, uh, you know, one challenge we've always seen is really getting the ocean carriers involved in some of these issues. And the White House has done a good job of bringing them around the table. So we're seeing some movement. Uh, everybody is very, very excited about saving Christmas, so to speak. So I know everyone's working hard. And, I, I'm, you know, kudos to John Picari for doing his work. So how long, from your, from your estimation, based on what you're seeing on the ground, shortages of chassis, empty containers sitting there and tying up those chassis, uh, obviously this backlog of ships waiting to unload more cargo uh, in the water as well, how long is all of this going to take to actually ease? Because it seems like there's so many different choke points to talk about in this process. Yeah, there are, and unfortunately, you know, I don't, I don't have a crystal ball. I'd probably be doing something different, to be honest. But, uh, you know, I've heard third quarter next year. I've heard 2023. It's hard to say. We've got a lot of volume, unprecedented volume. In fact, no port complex in the United States has ever, ever handled this many containers. And the challenges with the chassis, although there's might not be a shortage necessarily, but they're definitely being eaten up because we're storing empty containers. Matt, I watched the 60 Minutes piece last night. I know you were on it. Um, you know, again, we've covered this issue in a lot more depth. But what was interesting is everybody's pointing fingers at somebody else. You're pointing them at this, or the shippers are pointing them. I mean, it, it, you know, is there any ability of somebody to actually try to resolve this when you've got everybody blaming everybody else? Right. And, you know, I'll tell you, the blame game, there's no shortage of it down here. Uh, we try not to le level the finger at anyone, really. And, you know, we don't necessarily blame the marine terminals. We really feel that they're caught in the middle of all this between the ocean carriers, retailers, truckers, the port authorities, everybody. They're, they're doing their job as is longshore and getting those cargo ships unloaded once there's space available on dock. So, I don't, you know, the supply chain, as they call it, a system of systems, it is, in fact, a chain, and any chain that gets any link that gets stressed within that chain reverberates throughout the entire system. So there's really no one to blame individually necessarily, but there's no shortage of finger pointing, as I mentioned. As I mentioned. Yeah. Uh, you talk to truckers themselves, of course, and they quickly point to compensation structure and not being paid for time that they are there waiting to load or unload. Uh, has there been any movement on that kind of on that payment structure? Well, I'll tell you, it really depends on who you ask, to be honest. Uh, you know, we have a lot of drivers who are paid for their waiting time. We have folks who are employee drivers who are paid by the hour. So right now, you are in such high demand with the, as a CDL holder that you can really write your own ticket. So some of those folks who are perhaps thinking that they're getting that lower than what is deserved wage, uh, they can go and look around for the higher wage. And that, that's essentially what lends itself to the trucker shortage is a challenge with retention because people are always seeking out that higher, that higher, that higher pay. So uh, how much has actually changed? I think that just demand has really lent itself to higher salaries or higher wages for drivers in general. Uh, but, you know, in the trucking industry, we're, we're always facing one issue or another, and the drivers are the most critical link in the entire process. So our companies know that we need to take care of these folks in order to have them be motivated for continuing work and doing the, the good stuff that they're doing every single day.